In law school, they're coming at you. You don't get a choice of whether you want to participate in law school. If they call on you, it's your turn to say what you think the answer is. And a lot of professors are going to make you stand up. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Angela, with The Aspiring Boss. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, I am Angela. I am so happy that you're here and hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. So if you've been around for a while, you know that I did a video on things that they don't tell you about being a lawyer, um, which I'll link up in the cards here if you haven't seen it yet, so you can check it out. So I thought it was only right to do a video on things that they don't tell you about law school because you guys, if you're like me and you just did not have the guidance and the knowledge and the people to talk to and pick their brain, then once you show up to law school, you will be shocked. So I thought I would give you guys the information that I didn't necessarily get that I wish I would have got and that I think everybody should know. So this video is gonna be particularly good for anybody who does not have lawyers in their family, who don't know any lawyers, who know they wanna go to law school, but really don't know much about law school and the practice of law, this one is for you. So grab a snack, grab a drink, and let's get into it. Okay, so the first one is a doozy, okay? And I did not know this about law school, and I don't know if I was just naive and didn't do the right research, but I don't remember knowing this when I walked into law school on the first day. Your law school grades are graded on a curve. You guys, I know there are some people who have experienced curves in college, but I definitely didn't had no idea what it was. So when I say that you're graded on a curve in law school, what that means is only a certain amount of people can get A's, only a certain amount of people can get B's, only a certain amount of people will get C's and so forth. The majority of the people in the class will get your average, you know, C grade, B minus. But for those of you who are striving for the A's and the A pluses and the A minuses like I was, they're limited you guys they are limited only a certain amount of people can get an a that's totally different from college right if you're in a college class of 55 people right and you all study your butts off you all have the possibility of getting an a that is not the case in law school or you know in, in my law school experience and so many other people's law school experience honestly that just blew my mind because as you can imagine it kind of ratchets up the competition like only a certain amount of people can get a so i have to work harder than the next person so i can get this a a lot of pressure all right so the next thing is not all law schools are created equally there's a reason why you have tier one tier two tier three tier four you guys unfortunately the legal profession especially if you want to go work for a firm or work for a company it's all about prestige and so not saying that if you don't go to a top tier law school, you know, like Harvard or something that you won't get a job or that you can't get a firm job, but it is gonna be a lot harder. Take it from somebody who went to a lower tier school and went into big law. I had to have the top grades. I had to be on law review. I had to do a lot of things that uh, some of my colleagues at the better schools just didn't have to do, you know? So not all law schools are created equally. That's important to know. I wouldn't let it discourage you from picking a lower tier law school, especially if you have a scholarship, just know that there is a difference. This one is a big one. Law school does not teach you how to practice law. You guys, I know, right? Mind blown. I feel like in so many other professions such as accounting um, and you know doctors, you are learning what you're gonna be doing on the job in your you know graduate studies that's not the case in law school law school challenges you law school teaches you how to think law school you know think outside the box but it does not prepare you for the practice of law on the first day of my job nothing prepared me for what i did then and what i did now the thinking the critical analytical thinking yes but the actual practice of law it does not prepare you for it. and i think that is astoundingly true when it comes to transactional work I would not let that steer you away from transactional work, just saying. And honestly, I've heard litigators say the same thing, but you guys will have to check with some of your favorite litigator YouTubers to confirm that. All right, you guys, this next one, y'all. Your final exam is your grade for the entire semester. Now, some law schools might differ. You might have a midterm grade that goes into account or something like that, but for the most part, your final exam grade is your grade. You know how much pressure that is? You could be doing well in your assignments all through the year, doing all your readings, being prepared for class, when you called on, knowing the answer, 
but if you get a C on your final exam, that is your grade for the entire semester for that class. Like, make it make sense, you know? Um, that being said though, if you do well on exams, <laughs> well, you could have slapped all semester as far as like keeping up with your readings and you know being prepared for class but you study real good for the final exam so I, I feel like it just depends on you know it just depends on what your grade is whether that's a good or a bad thing but it's a scary thing and it's not a common thing it's something that we definitely did not experience in college so just thought y'all should know that so the next thing kind of piggybacks on that grades matter more than anything no matter you know what organizations you're involved in no matter you know if you go to class every day and get chummy with the professors and that's just what it is honestly there's some organizations that you can't even be a part of if you don't have the right grades or you have to go through a rigorous process to get on there such as law review um i did not have to write on law review they call write on basically where you write a brief or a memo or some sort of paper to see if you have what it takes to be on law review which is a prestigious law journal in law school but if you have the grades you can just get on law review and that's what I did writing is writing was not my strong point especially legal writing especially back then and so I was just lucky enough to be able to grade onto law review which was nice because it's such a resume booster but if i had to write on my chances of getting on if i'm just being completely honest with myself and my writing skills back then i'm not sure i would have made it and so grades good grades are really important more so than even than they were in college okay speaking of college you guys law school is a huge eye-opener it is so different from college in so many ways. Most importantly though, it's so different from college in how you have to study to be successful and how much you have to study to be successful. You guys, I don't know about y'all, but in college, I would literally make a study guide one to two days before the exam, you know, study it the day before and I could get an A. That's not law school. That is not law school at all. You have to prepare for that exam all semester by keeping up with your readings uh outlining um and by outlining it's kind of like creating a study guide but like i said i would create a study guide two days before the exam in college you're creating your study guide from day one in law school it's just a different ball game so how you study totally different in college teacher would give us a concept a definition i would read it over it a few times, get familiar with it, and be able to identify it on the test. That is not how law school works. One, you have to understand what they call the black letter law, which is the law, the you know the rule of law. Um, and in best case scenario, you memorize that black letter law so you can spit it out on the exam. And then not only do you have to memorize it and know it, you have to understand how to apply it, okay? So just because you can spit out, uh, for example, the definition of battery, if you don't know how to apply the elements of that definition, you still won't do good on the exam. So it's just a much deeper analytical, critical understanding and thinking about concepts. Way deeper, way more substantive than I ever got in undergrad. And then, like I said, how much you study. I studied two days for the exam, A. Like, law school i set aside a minimum of a month of preparing for finals when it came to law school and that's non-stop studying around the clock like studying zeroing in not going out not doing anything but studying totally different ball game all right the next thing they don't really tell you about and sometimes you don't find out until it's too late but your first year is the most important year in law school in my opinion here's why so in law school when you go for jobs and internships, um, some people get internships uh, their first summer. I was lucky enough to be able to do that. But majority of people, there are two L summers where they really get that good internship that turns into a full-time job after. But here's how it works. You interview for that 2L position at the beginning of your 2L year. So all they have to look at is your first year grades. Y'all feel why I'm saying that the first year is the most important? because they're judging your first year performance and whether you're going to get this internship and whether and that internship is usually what translates into your full-time gig after law school like not saying that everybody graduates law school um knowing where they're going to work a lot of people don't but for the people that do 
it's usually because of their 2L internship. It's just how it works. And that's something that I did not know. Luckily, things worked out for me in my first year and I did really well. And so I did secure a 1L and a 2L internship that led into my full-time job. But a lot of people don't know that. And a lot of people bounce back after their 1L year and really kill it their 2L year, but they missed out on a lot of those opportunities that come because of how well they did in their first year. So that's really something to keep in mind for you pre-law students. First year is super important. And just to piggyback on that, summer internships and summer associate programs are the best way to secure a job. I did not know that. I did not know that. Like when you think about college, a lot of people don't even start looking for their jobs until they graduate or until they're about to graduate. You guys, the firm that I started at for my first full-time gig as an attorney, I interned there my 1L year and then went back again my 2L year. But if you think about it, securing that job was a process, right? I started with that firm as a summer associate my 1L year and built that relationship and you know, met with people and people got to know me all through, you know, it was a process. That is one of the reasons why I graduated with a job already because I'd done the work 1L year. That's crazy. And the fact that I got a summer position as a 1L put me in a good place for when I was interviewing for 2L summer associate programs. Because they're like, oh, you worked here? Oh, that's a good firm. That's a top firm. We like you, we want you. Because that's the thing about law firms. It's very competitive. It's one law firm sees this law firm has a good candidate and they summer their 1L. Well, hey, we want you to come to our law firm, 2L, and we can show you how it's really done because we want you now. So it becomes a whole competition thing. It's crazy. But honestly, it's a good position to be in. I, I, I couldn't complain. I think I mentioned this already, but I'll just reiterate it. A good outline in law school is everything, okay? And that's whether you create your own or you get a good one from somebody who's had that professor or another person in your section, but a good outline is everything. And for those of you who are not in law school yet or don't know what an outline is, Again, it's similar to a study guide in, in college, you know, which you'd have a study guide in college. It's similar to that, but it's comprehensive of the whole class and not just the exam that your parent preparing for, you know, during that term. The next thing people should tell aspiring law students is don't make the decision lightly, okay? I think in America specifically, people are too willing to take on student debt without really thinking about how that affects you, right? Law school, cost six figures. Unless you have a, a full ride scholarship, law school is going to cost you some coins. Undergrad already costs you some coins and you have to go to undergrad in order to go to law school unless you're in like California or something. So a lot of people are taking out this big debt going to these lower tiered schools where their job prospects aren't that great and then they graduate and then they're not making that much money and then now they also have six figures of debt to pay. So. When you're thinking about law school, it's also important to think about the financial commitment of law school. I'm not saying that to deter anybody from going to law school. What I'm saying is know what you're getting into and have a plan. Also, it's more than just about the financial aspect. Also know what you're getting into as a career. If you're the type that sees yourself working a strict nine to five or less than, a traditional legal career might not be for you. Lawyers are not nine to fivers. We work a lot more than nine to five. We work nights, vacations, and weekends. That's just the profession. That's just the demand of the profession. So that's something to consider as well, what you want your life to look like. Too many people get into the profession and think that this is their dream job and then they realize hey this is not what i wanted and so a lot of people just especially as young people you see the glitz and the glamour that you see on tv you hear lawyer you think a lot of money but you also should think about what goes into the career again not saying this to discourage anybody just be informed before you make a decision you know that's going to affect you for the rest of your life because if you think about it you know you can always change careers but now you're six figures in debt you know, in this legal career. So you feel the need to at least stay and pay off your debt, you know, get your money's worth. So just make sure you have a plan and you think about the decision to go to law school um, very thoroughly before pulling the trigger. And I will say, I did not have a plan. I had faith in me and God's favor in me. But I would not suggest you guys do what I did. I, re I really should have sat down and thought about this a lot more. I'm thankful that it worked out, but that isn't always the case for everybody. So I just do want to 
throw that out there for you guys so you guys don't make the same mistakes that I made. Uh, okay, this next one. Networking is important. I think I mentioned this before. When it comes to social networking, your girl has no problems. Put me out at a bar with a drink, I'll be talking to people, socializing and everything. But for some reason, when it comes to professional networking, I just get in a different, it's like a different shell. I become less outgoing, it's so weird, right? But networking is important because although grades matter, sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know. And that is so important in the legal profession. And I will say for people like myself who did not have lawyers in their family, who is not from the state that you're practicing law, so it's not like you have all these connections and people that you know, it's important to start making those connections in law school and keep building up on those connections once you're in the legal field. Very, very important. It's not always the easiest thing to do, but it's very important. It's something you guys should start thinking about as soon as you start law school. Trust me, I should have did this. Okay, the next thing is law school is competitive, okay? You are, <laughs> most lawyers are like very type A, very goal driven, very used to being the best. Very used to getting the best grades, very used to being in the top of their class, just very used to success, right? But then you get to law school and everybody's used to that same thing, right? So there's a lot of competition and the competition and the pressure can be hard. You'll find yourself comparing to people. You'll find yourself, you know, thinking you're not smart enough. Don't even feed into that, okay? Be, be mindful that it is competitive. Put the work in, but focus on you, okay? Don't focus on anybody else. I've talked about this before. Don't worry about the gunners. And the gunners are the people who just, Talk, talk, talk in class, always know the answer, always have something to say. Don't worry about them, focus on you and your studies and you'll do fine. All right, the next thing y'all is probably the biggest thing about law school that I didn't know that I really wish I would've known. Law school professors teach via the Socratic method. And what I mean by the Socratic method is you literally have to be prepared to answer questions about the material before it's even taught, like by the professor, based on your read. Example, contracts class. You are assigned a reading that explains all the elements of what a contract is, how you come to a contract, whether, you know, oral contracts or contracts, all of that, right? But the professor hasn't talked about it. You just assigned the reading. Many of us know that sometimes when you read, you know, yeah, you can read it, but you really need the professor to flesh it out and really give examples for you to fully understand. But that's not how it works in law school. You're assigned the reading, you go into class, professor, you're, you know, professor's teaching, you're clicking on, Angela, stand up. And you're like, what? Like, what are the elements of a contract? Um, and you're fumbling and you're trying to think like, well, what did I read? I just read this last night, but I don't know. Like, you haven't taught it to me yet. I just read, but I didn't get any examples. I'm not sure I fully understand, but that's how it works. Well, essentially, it's nothing like college, right? You go to college, you don't really have to be prepared because you're only gonna speak unless you raise your hand. Like nobody, you don't, the professor's not gonna call on you. The professor is just gonna come in, teach, let people speak if they want to. I'll let you raise your hand and ask a question, but they're not gonna come at you. In law school, they're coming at you. You don't get a choice of whether you wanna participate in law school. If they call on you, it's your turn to say what you think the answer is. And a lot of professors are gonna make you stand up. And it's sporadic in a lot of classes to where you have no idea whether you're gonna get called on or not. So basically what this does is puts the pressure on people to be prepared. You're gonna wanna be prepared for class because you don't wanna get called on and get embarrassed in front of the entire class. So it's a kind of like a little bit hazing. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, this can translate into the practice of law too. On this last one, I'm gonna end on a positive note. The possibilities are endless. You can literally go into so many different types of fields of law. You can do so many careers with a law degree, okay? I actually recently did a video on different types of law paths that you can go down. So I'll link it up in the cards here in case you guys haven't seen it yet. But yes, I want you guys to know that there are so many possibilities for careers with a law degree. So with that, take that information, do your research, try as many internships as you can, talk to as many different lawyers, many different law students, as many people as you can to really kind of see what all there is out there because there is so much out there. And one thing I just want to say is I don't want anybody to take this video and think that I'm discouraging anyone from going to law school. 
all I wanted with this video is for you guys to be a little bit more informed than I was. So with that, I'm gonna have you guys go ahead and like this video right now. If you aren't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. If you don't have the notification bell on, go ahead and put the notification bell on guys because that will let you know every single time I upload. As we're getting into this last quarter, I have some big goals for the channel. I'm gonna probably start posting a little bit more sporadically. I'm gonna do videos every Sunday for sure. But I will be dropping, you know, bonus videos throughout the week on different days, who knows. So you need to have those post notifications on so you can make sure you know when I post. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.